Hi there, and welcome to week 15 of Nutrition Bites. All right, so today I'm going to be sharing a recipe for homemade black bean burgers. All right, so first we'll talk a little bit about the ingredients. Then this will be kind of a review from a few weeks ago, some of the types of legumes and the health benefits of legumes. And then I'll also talk a little bit about plant-based meat alternatives, as well as the food processing spectrum and the weekly challenge. All right, so here's my recipe for black bean burgers. Very simple, only uses two cans of black beans, um, some oatmeal, some flax, and some seasonings. Um, so it's really easy to make. Um, and I just put the oats in a blender and blend them up before adding them into the mixture. Um, really delicious. I think they taste better than a lot of the store-bought black bean burgers. So give it a try and see what you think. Um, oh, I should also mention that if you don't want to blend oatmeal, you can use breadcrumbs or um, you could buy oat flour and do it that way. All right, so because this is a black bean burger, I thought we would talk briefly about legumes again. Um, and this is in week nine. Uh, so if you want to learn more about legumes and beans and cooking with them, um, check out that week. But these are some of the main types of legumes that are really popular. Black beans, chickpeas, green beans. Green peas are legumes, as well as peanuts uh, and soybeans. So those are all legumes, um, and navy beans, pinto beans, etc. All right. So again, this is a little bit of a review. Uh, these are some of the health benefits of legumes. So they are a good source of complex carbohydrates. Uh, they're also a great source of plant protein, and dietary fiber, and vitamins and minerals like folate and potassium. So when we look at the nutrition facts of one cup of canned black beans, we see that that provides 220 calories, no fat, 14 grams of protein, 42 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fiber, no cholesterol, really low in sodium, only 170 milligrams, and then some iron and calcium. All right, so because this recipe is for a homemade burger, I thought it would be a good time to talk a little bit about plant-based meat alternatives. So these would be like your Impossible Burger, your Beyond Burger, any of the veggie burgers, veggie meats, anything like that. So the take home with these products are that they can be good to use as a transition from a meat diet to a vegetarian diet. However, they are still very highly processed and can have a lot of added sodium, fat, and sugar in them. They're also much more costly than products like tofu or beans. So therefore, it's my opinion that these products can be enjoyed if you wish from time to time, but they're not necessarily a food item that you should consume on a regular basis. Uh, so this is a graph that compares uh, some of the nutrition facts in some plant-based meat alternatives. So Saitan, um, Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger, and then Jackfruit and Tofu. And what I find really interesting is how high the sodium is in some of these processed um, burgers. And then looking at like the tofu or the jackfruit and how much lower those are. So this full chart will be in the article for you to look at on your own. All right. So... Back to the idea of food processing. Again, these plant-based meat alternatives can be still very highly processed. And so that brings us to this topic of food processing. And this is the food processing spectrum. We have group one that has unprocessed or minimally processed foods. So this is fresh, dry, frozen vegetables, fruits, grains, legumes, seeds, and nuts, things like that. Then we have group two, which is our processed culinary ingredients. So these are going to be our plant oils, our maple syrup, honey, sugar, that sort of thing. Then we have group three, which is processed foods. So these are going to be anything that's canned or pickled, um, you know, canned fruit, things like that. And then we have group four, which is the ultra processed foods. Now, these are foods that hardly even resemble food at all. And they're sugar sweetened, they're full of sodium, full of oil, things to keep them um, preserved. So things like chicken nuggets or ice cream, things like that. And so the goal here is to eat 80% of our calories, at least 80% from group one, the unprocessed or minimally processed food. And that leaves 20% to eat from the remaining three groups with less than 5% coming from the ultra processed foods. These are the foods that we really want to limit or avoid altogether. So again, to just to recap, 80% from group one, 20% from groups two, three, and four with less than 5% coming from group four. 
All right, so the weekly challenge. Um, I wanna challenge you to try making a homemade burger this week, or maybe next time you attend a summer picnic or cookout, uh, something like that, take a homemade burger to that. And that is all for this week. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all next week.